What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Mas Masa. Thank you guys for being here with me once again. I have another recipe for you guys and I think you're going to love it. A few months back, I had the honor of participating in Concha Con. I got to be the MC for the Concha fashion show and I also had the opportunity to do a live demo of my Concha French toast. And I even got to wear a super adorable apron, a concha apron made by Siempre Viva. And I just felt like the concha queen. So today I'm going to be making for you guys Mante Conchas. I was sent these cool bread stamps from breadstamps.com and you can find them on Instagram and actually these are sold on Amazon and they are these cool bread stamps. They have this little mini one. I don't know if you could see that but check it out. It's like to create a mini concha and they have the larger size stamp which is probably the one I'm going to be using today so it's a bread stamp to create the top delicious mouth-watering topping of my mante concha so I'm going to be using these so if you decide that you would want to recreate this recipe that I'm going to share with you guys today hit them up so get your concha stamp and these aren't the only ones they have they have like all kinds of different stamps for your bread they have like dog paws uh, they have like snowflakes and all kinds of cool uh, stamps for your bread so make sure you hit like on this video subscribe hit the notification bell so you can get notified of all future videos you do not want to miss any of my videos right so let's get started guys you ready let's do this Okay, so here are the ingredients. You're going to need three and two thirds cup of harina. This is all purpose flour. You're gonna need some yeast, some levadura, and you need about 11 grams or one of these little packages uh, that they sell all over the place. You're gonna need half a cup of evaporated milk. You're gonna need two thirds cup of sugar, eight tablespoons of butter, half a teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Okay, so for the topping, you're gonna need one cup of flour, one and one fourth cup of powdered sugar, three fourths cup of all vegetable shortening, and food coloring. Okay guys, so this procedure I am going to do with the help of my KitchenAid, but you can do all this by hand if you have the woman power to get this part done. But I'm just gonna throw everything in my bowl and have the KitchenAid do all the mixing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create my yeast mix. I have my evaporated milk here and it is warm. I warmed it up a little. So there's my evaporated milk. I'm going to add the yeast in here. From the same flour batch that I have, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of flour. I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of the sugar that I have set aside uh, from the same mix that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna dump that. You wanna mix it well so that everything dissolves and mixes well. And then you're gonna set this aside probably for about 10 minutes. It just depends on how warm your house is but you don't want it to be like blazing hot in your room. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is put in all of my flour. I am going to add the sugar. I'm gonna add the salt. And I'm gonna mix that a little just because I want to make sure that the dry ingredients have been mixed. You're also going to add the vanilla in there. And I'm going to start mixing this and then I'm going to add the yeast as it's mixing. Once 
while this is still mixing, I'm gonna go ahead and add the butter. As you can see, it still looks a little gooey, but you can begin to detach it from the sides. So that means it's almost ready. It's still sticky, but it should be easier to detach. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of the flour on my surface, and I'm going to place my dough over it. And it should still be sticky, but it should begin to form together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little bit of the shortening so that I can kind of bring it together. As you can see, it's turned into a nice soft ball of dough. And I'm just going to kind of massage it so that it can come all together and I can take off all the rest of the dough from my hands and the surface. See how it doesn't really stick anymore? I mean, it's sticking because I still have some of the dough here, but if I were to remove it, it would no longer stick. Do you see that? Look how pretty it is. Well, see how it turns into a nice ball? So now I'm gonna grease a bowl and place it in there. You can use butter or shortening, whatever it is that you want. I'm just gonna put it all over my bowl so that it's easy to remove. I'm gonna let it sit for a while. So I'm gonna make it into a nice ball and then place it in my bowl. Okay, so just make sure you put a little bit of your shortening over the dough just so it does not dry up. And then you're gonna cover it for until it rises or until it grows double its size. Uh, you could wrap it with saran wrap or just cover it with whatever it is that you have. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna work on the topping. Okay, so I have another bowl here and I'm gonna make the topping and you're gonna need one cup of flour, one and one fourth cup of powdered sugar. You're also gonna add three fourths cup of all vegetable shortening. Your shortening should be room temperature so that it's easy to mix together or to blend together. So now you're just gonna go in there and knead it until it all comes together. Start in the bowl, then bring it out onto your surface and knead it until it becomes solid. So it depends how many different colors you're gonna make. That's how uh, you can divide uh, your dough. I'm just gonna make two different colors. So I'm gonna cut this in half and then add the food coloring. Okay, so here's my dough for the topping and I cut it into two pieces because I'm gonna make two colors. If I decide to make a third one, I'll just cut another one in half and then add the food coloring. So I'm gonna start with one and I'm just gonna kinda open it up and I'm gonna do pink because why not? Now this is just personal preference, depends how pink you wanna make your topping. But I'm gonna start off with this. Whoa, and I can already tell that <laughs> I added a lot, but who knows what it'll turn out to look like. So let's just see, hopefully I don't dye my countertop. <laughs> Whoa. All right, so here is color number one. And it's up to you how much food coloring you add, guys. Obviously, I went ham on the color, because uh, why not? Actually, it's because 
I just added too much. <laughs> I'm gonna set them aside and then I'm gonna cover them so that they can rest and do what they need to do. So once you have colored the dough, just cover with plastic until your bread dough is ready. Okay, so it's been about two hours because I had the AC on and here is my dough. It has double its size and you can't tell because this is a huge bowl, but if you could see from the side, it has already doubled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly dust my surface and I'm going to just place my dough over this and I'm gonna flatten my dough. What you're gonna do is pretty much take the air out and then you're gonna bring it back to the shape that it was. You don't really need to knead it that much. And I'm gonna cut this into 24 even pieces. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna make them into little balls and I'm gonna drop them in my cupcake maker and they're gonna continue to rise here. Now that I'm done, I'm gonna get a little bit of the vegetable shortening and I'm just gonna add a little bit to the top of each one just so they don't crack while they're blowing up because they're still gonna rise. Okay, and now I'm just gonna set them aside and work on the topping. Okay, so these were cooling in my fridge uh, during the time that I was rolling out my bread dough. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this into little pieces and make them into round balls. All right, so I'm gonna begin to uh, create my topping. And as you can tell, I have two different sizes. And for my cupcakes, I'm gonna need the small size uh, because see if I put it up against there, uh, this is the perfect size, which means our ball, I had made balls this size, but through trial and error, I need smaller balls. So don't manipulate the, the topping too much because the warmer it gets, the harder it is to peel off uh, whatever you use to create it. So I'm gonna use this because I don't know, it's just, it seems easier and quicker. Uh, but you can use a rolling pin or you can just flatten it out like so if I were to put that and I'm gonna actually get some of this Flour sprinkle it there Sprinkle it there just to make sure that it doesn't stick and if I were to just use plastic I can actually just press it and Get it to the size that I need it so I could do something like that, and I think that would be a perfect size. Let me see, I can even compare it. Yeah, perfect, all right. So I'm gonna remove it. I'm gonna put some flour on my bread stamp, then I'm just gonna tap it, peel it off, and layer it over my cupcake. Yeah! Bam! So if you want to use the tortilla press, it's pretty much the same process. You just sprinkle, sprinkle, create your little ball, place, cover it, flatten, and there you go. The only problem is it might be too much pressure and it'll be uh, a little bigger than what you need for your cupcake. So I would say kind of, you know, test it out a few times. So I'll probably use this much 
instead um, for each cupcake. So let's try that again. Let's see if it works out, just so you guys see that it actually works. All right, all right, all right. There we go. There we go, that's probably gonna be about right. So it's just a trial and error, guys. I don't wanna flatten it too much because I don't want it super thin. And look at, there you go. Kind of the same size, right? Look how perfect that came out. And now, I, like I said, the more you manipulate it, the harder it is to remove. So, I'm just gonna, there we go, and place it over my cupcake. And of course, you're gonna fix that. Put it in there, whatever it is you need to do. Okay guys, so here's my first batch. I'm gonna put them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 14, 15 minutes. As soon as you see that the top layer has uh, browned a little, then you should be good to go. I'll be right back, woo! And here they are, straight out of the oven. So you're gonna let them cool for about five to 10 minutes just to make sure that the topping cools down and doesn't break off right away. So here are the Monte Conchas. Don't they look super duper cute? I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This takes time and effort to bring to life because like I said, it does take time and it does take work. Thank God I finally gave in and stopped being so cheap and got myself a KitchenAid. And uh, these amazing bread stamps that were sent to me by breadstamps.com. So check them out, breadstamps.com. Uh, they are also, just look them up under bread stamps on Amazon or on Instagram as well. So these will definitely make your life easier uh, to creating this really cute and adorable looking Monte Concha. The topping, look at that guys. They are so adorable, so cute. I mean, they're totally worth it. I, look at, I mean, I did a two-tone color as well, so you can definitely personalize your Monte Conchas. So that's it guys. Uh, let me try one of these out. I'm gonna try this pink one and there's no flavor to it. You can also add cinnamon to your bread and that changes the flavor of your bread as well. So I didn't add the cinnamon, but you can do that yourself if you want that extra flavor. But look at guys, look how nice. Look at, look at the bottom, beautiful, right? Oh yeah, all around. Let's, let's take a look at the inside. Oh, look at that. It looks amazing, guys. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, I wanna try the topping first. Mmm, mmm. The topping tastes just like the concha, the concha topping. Let me try the bread. Mmm. This will definitely make your party look amazingly cute. Uh, just with the variety of colors, guys. And of course, I mean, who doesn't love a concha bread, right? That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a comment below uh, if you have any pointers for me. Like I said in the video before, I'm not a baker, but I do love to eat and I do love to cook. So I'm always willing to experiment in the kitchen. If there's a recipe that you would like to see from me, leave it down below and um, I'll try and replicate it for you if I can. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, Latina in the house. And uh, I'm gonna eat now. Mm, 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 mm. The next batch is up.